Hey, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I I really hope my mic is working. I got an adapter to to help it be able be compatible with my new phone, but I'm not gonna know until after I finish recording. And I know none of this matters to you, and the person watching this. But today I wanna talk about the impairment hierarchy and now i realize this is a very controversial issue especially within the disabled community people accuse people of playing the of russian olympics but as somebody who's experienced ableism within the disabled community and discrimination within the disabled community. I really wanted to talk about this and not to shame people or be like, oh, I have it worse than you, but instead to push people to be better and to push people to include other disabled people that may have disabilities that are less socially acceptable. I think a good example of this, and I know this is going to cause some controversy because they are very unbeloved within the disabled community, but I think a really good case study for this is the dance team called the Let's. Now, this was a dance team founded by Chelsea Hill, who was a, a dancer and got into a car accident and sustained a, a spinal cord injury. So now she is paralyzed and uses a wheelchair to get around. So she founded the, his dance group for the role and called the Rolettes to empower disabled girls and women and to tell them that they too could be dancers. Now, Erica, why do you have a problem with this? I don't have a problem with this but i believe there are let me count the members because i don't want to get this wrong but there are in, including chelsea there's one two three four five six seven members of this dance group but all of them have spinal cord injuries and I understand that the only people who can understand what it's like to sustain a spinal cord injury are people with spinal cord injuries but at the same time they're a dance team that wants to say that they're representing disabled girls and women and they have this this like expo every year called the Rolex e experience and it is in California and a bunch of disabled people go out to California and they do their dances and they have like seminar type things where they have guest s speakers 
and they allow people with all types of disabilities to go and be empowered. But they give the idea that you can be a dancer no matter what your disability is. And yet they're only showing people with spinal cord in injuries. And yes, any of the people with spinal cord injuries, it does affect their upper body. But they're all relatively, they meet conventional beauty standards. And it's not inclusive. So you're letting people pay to go to your event, but they're not good enough to be on your team. So somebody with visible spasticity can pay to go to your event, but you only have team members that have spinal cord injuries. I think my big problem with this is the idea in able-bodied society that people who are born with disabilities and whose disability may affect the way they speak or the way they think and the way they move, that they are somehow less than people who had once been non-disabled and they ha had an injury or an event and became disabled. I feel like people with spinal cord injuries are seen as formerly able-bodied people and in our society, they tend to be treated better than people who have lifelong disabilities and disabilities that affect their speech and stuff like that. I know, but something I wanted to say to people is, can you think of any leaders or public figures with speech impairments, with visible spasticity? When you think of the leaders within the disabled community, you probably think of people like Ed Roberts and Judy Human, and this is not knocking either of them. I am very thankful for all of their contributions and how I would not be living the life I'm living today if it were not for them. But at the same time, I feel like the, the disability community still is can be very ableist and C certain people are not ever going to be in leadership positions, not because they wouldn't make a good leader or not because they don't have valuable ideas or they're not talented, but simply because their disability makes people uncomfortable. I realized my disability makes people uncomfortable. Some people don't like to watch my videos because it gives them anxiety to hear me stutter. Imagine how that makes me feel as someone who stutters. And the person that left that comment had the audacity to be like, I'm just trying to help people to say like, if you can't get through her videos, put it on double speed. Like, you did not have to make that comment and make me feel like shit. I realize I, I stutter. I realize I drool sometimes. And I know this isn't something people want to hear. This isn't attractive. But disability shouldn't have to be attractive for disabled people to have rights. And this is why I am very passionate about representation of all types of disabilities, intellectual disabilities, physical disabilities, vision and hearing impairments. Like, 
I feel like as a community, we need, we need to not have such harsh lines and not just be in groups like, oh, this is an event for people with CP. This is an event for people with spinal cord injuries. This is an event for blind people. This is an event for deaf people. And I do understand that with certain accommodations, it can make people feel more at ease if they are with people that have impairments that are, are like their own. And I understand that. And with like the blind, with blindness and deafness, I do see a benefit in having a, events that are exclusively for people that are deaf and blind, but also have events for all disabled people where deaf and blind people are in included. Because I am of the mindset that we can learn from each other. And if we stay in silos that are impairment specific and with people that move like us and think like us, are we ever truly going to be able to learn? If we're going to define disability as a type of diversity, then then within disability, there is a diversity and not just, oh, there's LGBTQIA plus people that are disabled and black people that are disabled and let he, he and let the next people that are disabled because of course there is that diversity and we need to talk about that and we need to push for more inclusiveness in general within the disabled community. But also within that, we also need to see that people with all different impairments are in included and not just the quote unquote pretty disabilities that non-disabled people can relate to and they can find some common ground there. I feel like a lot of times the disabled community will push against people who have speech impairments or who maybe may have an intellectual disability because they want to be like, well, if we're pushing for rights, don't we want to look as good as possible? Don't we want to be as normal as possible? But that in and of itself is ableist. And then you are just, you are just trying to gain privilege while oppressing other people. And that is never an okay thing to do. And I am, I want to be clear here that I'm not accusing the roulettes of trying to do this and trying to be better than other disabled people. My point is not to shame them, but it is more of a, a, a call in to say, hey, it would be great if you would include people on your dance team with visible spasticity and with disabilities other than spinal cord injuries, because it is indicative of a larger culture within the disabled community of only representing certain people and putting certain people forward because they are viewed as better or less disabled or more socially acceptable than other disabled people. I don't know if any of this made sense. <laughs> I don't. It makes sense in my brain. I'm hoping it makes sense to other people. But anyway, thank you for watching this. I hope you learned something or it made you think. And if it did, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you have not already and you would like to see more of my content, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Thank you so much for
for watching and I hope to see you again next time. Bye!